Hey everyone, in this video I would like to discuss with you a paranormal experience that I had at an old abandoned mine shaft. Um, now this isn't really like the normal typical mine shaft that you might be aware of. This is more of an um, open pit type mine. And um, basically the story goes, you go to this old abandoned mine and it's supposedly haunted. So when you go there you get the feeling of someone chasing you, you get the feeling of hearing like your name being whispered and I believe the other thing was you get the feeling of being pushed because there's some areas out there um, there's a tractor going by go ahead and let the tractor go by <laughs> okay so you there's this saying that there's like this kind of a pit area where there's a lake and if you stand kind of on the edge of it you get the feeling of being pushed like like you're gonna fall so um, you know when we heard about this place we knew we you know we like hey we got to get our stuff together we've got to go out here and we've got to check this place out so I'm gonna insert the picture here so you can get an idea of what this place kind of looked like now this is a photo back from about 1990 or something and it's one that um, that I've had um, for, for a while so this photo um, just kind of gives you an idea so you can kind of have an idea of what this place looks like and what this place is. Now, what you're seeing is kind of in the middle of um, a bunch of woods. Now, it's kind of like a deer wood camp, um, sort of. But it has lots of trails and um, dirt roads all intertwining, going, you know, all which ways and stuff. So, this is kind of in the center of this place, okay? Now, what it is, it's, it's an open pit mine, um, not like a mine shaft or anything like that, but... Um, there's also this lake around it. You can see I kind of like this lake around it. And there was a story about that lake. So we're walking around this abandoned mine. And we've got our recorder. And I've got a recorder and a couple other friends have a recorder as well. So we have kind of, um, you know, like are split up maybe, well, we're together, but maybe about like 10 feet um, separating us. As we start walking closer to this open pit mine, we start to see this grayish type of figure, um, a ghost, standing in front of the water. Now, this is um, some really weird um, phenomenon that happened here because I've never quite experienced what I'm about to share with you before, um, but what had happened was there's this figure standing in front of the water and I'm asking my friends do you see this and they're saying yeah they do see it supposedly there was an old abandoned area um, like a little old abandoned kind of a shack thing out there so we're trying to find that too so I asked this apparition ghost sir do you know where the old shack is that we've heard about and it it was like as if the second I said that the man or ghost figure was standing there and pretty much you could, it was still see through, you know, kind of a grayish. But as this is this is the strangest part right here, because as I asked him that, like when I'm still in the middle of the sentence, do you know where the shack is? The figure like shrunk down into like this ball of green. Uh, I know it's freaking crazy, but like it shrunk into the, like this green, like ball of light, and shot into the water. Um, and uh, you know we're like, oh, you know, like what in the just happened? So we're wondering, what what now? You know, what are we gonna do now? Um, because this is freaky. I've never experienced anything like that. Like an apparition actually pretty much dissolve into a ball of light and shoot into the water. Um, so we're like, okay, well, let's just keep going. You know, I mean, obviously we're meant to be here and there's something going on, so let's just keep checking the place out. So we, start, um, so we keep on walking around and we get um, a little further in and we see the shack kind of in the distance. There goes the tractor again. Uh, right when I make a video, the tractor would have to go by. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but 
There he goes. Okay. Now, back to the train of thought. Now, as we keep walking, you know, we just left that be and kept going. I took some pictures, too, but nothing, nothing came up. But we did keep on proceeding down the little dirt road. Um, and we did begin to see the shack in the distance. And we start to hear, like, some type of a shuffling. Like, it sounds like somebody's walking around in the woods. And uh, so this is getting a little spooky because we think we're the only ones out there. It's really late at night. Um, we're just not sure. It could be in a wild animal. Who knows? Um, we never did find out what that noise was. Um, but I don't really like to say it's paranormal because it could be a number of things out there in the woods. Um, so yeah, it could have been a person, it could have been a dog, it could have been um, a wild animal, a skunk, an armadillo. I mean, it could be just hundreds of things. So we ruled that out as being anything phenomenal. So we kept on going. And, um, you know, we're getting a little bit closer. We're getting really deep down this dirt road. This was like, a, I guess, a, a small part of the uh, mine pit. I really don't know, but this was pretty much like um, a hole in the ground, and it had like some sides where you could like look over, um, and it was really deep going down. So I don't know if this was another part of the mine pit um, or what this was, but we go up to it, and um, as we start to get closer, we kind of hear this sound. Um, I wasn't really sure what that was, and of course, um, it didn't actually pick up on the tape, so I don't know what that sound was. So we get closer to this little ledge here, and when I start to get closer to it, I start really getting this feeling of something's behind me. Um, so I said to my friend, this must be the spot that everybody gets that feeling, you know, just that known lore of the area, that this is the spot. Um, that you sense the feeling of being pushed because I kind of started to get that feeling. So we're discussing that this is probably the spot that uh, everybody's talking about feeling the feeling of being pushed. So as I say that this must be the spot that everyone gets that feeling. Um, pretty much the second I said that, there was some sort of, now this is weird, but there was some type of a stick that was like hovering in the air. Um, just, you know, a straight up stick just kind of doing like this. Um, just hovering. It seems like I reached out to grab it, and when I reached out to grab it, it just fell to the ground. Um, and that was it. I did take some pictures of this limb floating, but I mean, nothing. It wasn't worth anything. I mean, the pictures were too dark, and um, I don't even have the pictures now, but. I remember that they just wasn't um, wasn't worth keeping, that's for sure. So after that experience, we pretty much just headed on back to the car um, and left because um, we were getting the feeling that there was personal experiences there, but we are not going to be able to record or get any of this on tape. Um, it was pretty much refused um, by the spirits that reside there. Um, I kind of got the feeling of young, um, a young spirit, um, I got the feeling that the person or person's spirits that were there at the time that we were, um, wasn't too happy with our presence and wasn't really wanting to speak with us. I think they were more like trying to show us they wanted us to leave, kindly leave, and, um, not come back. So basically, we left and um, never did go back there. Um, but I had some friends that was that called me up one day and wanted directions to go out there because they wanted to go and check it out. So I gave it to them, and they said they were going to go out there. And when they went out there, they couldn't get in because um, pretty much, like, every five feet, there was si a trespassing sign. So no trespassing, um, you know, you'll be prosecuted if you come on the land, things like that. So... Um, they didn't get to go check it out, and, but we did do a little bit of research um, on the place to try to find out, you know, if, things, if anything had happened there, if someone had died or something. So what we found out was, um, after doing a little bit of research, that there was a, a group of kids that were out there one night riding four-wheelers and partying and drinking and things like that, 
and they were riding their four-wheelers at night, um, drinking and stuff. So I don't really think that's very good because these roads, these are really dirt roads. So it's like, yeah, you can get on one of them dirt roads and hit it and ride that four-wheeler um, for hours if you wanted. I mean, you know, without really any trouble, but at nighttime with no lights and drinking, I don't really think that's the best idea of it. I always wanted to go out there and ride four-wheelers, but never did get the chance, and now it's just too late. But anyway, these people were out there, and they were partying. They were riding their four-wheelers, and one of them had an accident and wrecked. And um, basically, he hit like a mound of dirt rock and flew up in the air and landed into the lake and hit his head and pretty much drowned. And that's, that's the story of that. I believe that happened sometime in the 70s or probably early 80s. Yeah, it was early 80s. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the story of that. So I've always wondered if maybe that guy that had drowned out there was somewhat there, somewhat kind of protecting the place, maybe. Like, not really there to scare you, but more like kind of scare you to get you to leave, but didn't want you to stick around because he didn't want anything to happen to somebody else like what happened to him. So the weird occurrences and the weird experiences led to that point. And now that I'm sitting here thinking about this, and this is really kind of freaking me out a bit because now I've just put two and two together and that man, ghosty man that we saw when we first walked in standing in front of that lake or in front of the pit and then thrown into a ball and fell in. I think, now that I'm seeing this, that was the ghost showing us what happened to him and probably trying to give us a sign that we should go ahead and leave now um, before anything else happens. So, yeah, that's quite an experience. Um, I just, I just think that possibly that ghost was wanting to let us know this to keep us from getting in any harm. And now that the place is all locked up, there must have been a lot of people going out there and checking this place out, probably doing a lot of things that they shouldn't be doing um, because, you know, it's several miles of dirt road. So, I mean, you really just you know, you could at one time probably go out there and really have a good time and have a little party and just really have fun with friends. But um, I guess since that guy died out there, it's really changed. Um, and his, his ghost presence is still there protecting the area, I believe, to keep people from getting hurt or to keep people from um, being there. No pictures to show you this time. I don't really have any pictures of that place. Um, I will have some pictures coming up with my next couple of videos that I will be talking about some more paranormal experiences. I have some graveyard photos and um, I did find a couple more photos of my Ouija boards. So I was going to go ahead and show you those too. So, And I may even make a video on how to communicate with spirits and how to get um, in touch with them, how to go about connecting with spirits because there are so many different ways you can do it but there are ways you can do it and actually do it in a way of showing respect to the ghost or spirit okay well thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a great week and the weekend's coming up so blessed be everyone and talk to you soon bye